What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the Gold Guy YouTube channel. I think I should change my intro up a bit. I don't like saying YouTube two times in one sentence. But anyways, welcome back to the TS-185 restoration. It's been a while. I know some of you guys really miss the TS-185 videos. Here it is. This is uh, the last restoration video. I'm going to be restoring the frame as you can see and the swing arm. Um, the swing arm is just going to get painted, but the frame is going to get some light modifications. The reason I'm going to have to modify the frame is, well, you guys have never seen these parts yet, but I've got a tail light and some turn signals. I got four turn signals and I've even got this rear fender. This is just a universal fender I found on eBay. It's just pretty thin sheet metal. I know the stock one was plastic, so this was only like $14. Just some light mods to this area of the frame and then I'm gonna paint it. But first of all, you guys are always telling me to use a pressure washer, so. Quick little update on the GSA 50. It's been sitting for a few hours after riding it on the first test ride after doing all that stuff to the engine. If you guys didn't see those videos, I'll put a link up here and in the description. Uh, still no oil leaks. It's looking good. There are always drips under the oil pan and there are no drips now. God bless America. Looks like both of the foot pegs come off together, held on by these bolts. This is going to need some light repairs. Uh, it's pretty close. Better than before. Now I should be able to get this rusty plate off. Looks like just four, two bolts on each side. Guess that's 11 millimeter? I don't know, that's weird. 11 millimeter. So that's a first. Surprised I've been having such good luck with this hardware. It's so rusty. They have spoken too soon. Oh, I guess not. Alright, there we go. All this stuff is going to get restored separately. I think that's part of the seat latch. Not really too sure. These little rubber mount things probably come out if they can. They're pretty dry rotted. Let's see. In one piece. This one should probably come out too. Oh, this one's hefty. And over here on the swing arm, we just have the brake stay bar to remove. It looks like just a frame, but it actually turned into all of this stuff. For all this hardware and stuff, all this came off the frame. Gonna put that in a big cup, and then I'm gonna pour some of this rust remover All right, it's been like three days. Let's see how this stuff looks. This stuff looks pretty dang good. If you guys remember from the seat episode where I restored this seat, check it out, link in the description or up here. 
Uh, this seat is actually from a TC-185 and for some reason the hinges are on the opposite side of the TS-185 seat. So that means that the hinge points here are on the opposite side of the frame. So the first thing I'm going to need to do to modify the frame is cut off these hinge points and move them on to this other side, weld them back on, and yeah. The seat seems to fit perfectly though, other than that. Looks like I cut a little bit too deep getting this hinge off, so I'm going to just weld this crack back up. And now I'll just smooth out my bad weld. I've got the gas tank and seat mocked up on the frame. I just put a bolt through the hinge and it's ready to be welded onto the frame. I'm first going to tack it. Alright, let's see if she'll hinge. Yep, I don't want to put too much stress on it, but it seems like that's good to go. So let's go ahead and weld it the rest of the way on there. Check it out. This is my first bike with a hinging seat. You guys saw me weld that one on, but camera was charging up so I didn't film this one but I had to actually add a little extension piece of metal to that hinge and I might have to bend it, tweak it a little bit more to make it fit, but it seems like it's gonna work out just fine. So what's next? Oh yeah, this, this thing's next. Let's see how it fits. Oh, that was easy. No modifications needed. So, the actual mounting holes are right there. And so with it back that far, you can see the gaps and the bends in the fender. So I probably could straighten that out, but there's no need to when I can just move it forward a little bit. It's pretty surprising how well this universal fender fits. The only bad thing about it there's all these holes right here. This is meant for the big license plate taillight mount. I'm not going to end up mounting it like that. As far as this taillight goes, I think I'm going to make a bracket that fits on the fender that, that holds the taillight in place. And it's going to be somewhere like that. I'm not really worried about covering up the Suzuki logo because the font's kind of weird anyway. And as far as the turn signals go, I'm probably just going to either drill a hole in the fender to mount it or drill another hole in the frame to mount it right there. I think I'm all done modifying the frame. I noticed that the neck of the frame looked a little bit twisted, so using a propane torch and ratchet strapping the frame to a post, I tried to twist it back, obsessed over it for a little bit, and I think I fixed it a little bit until I blew up my porch. Well, I blew a hole in the concrete and uh, it's good enough. If anyone was curious, this is the welder I'm using, Chicago Electric, aka Harbor Freight, 90 amp flux wire welder, no gas. This is what I've used since I started welding and it works pretty good for most things. I was going to leave some of the paint on originally, but after seeing how easy it comes off of the wire wheel, I think I would rather just be safe and remove it with some aircraft remover, start out from a fresh new pallet. I was 
just wiping and this appeared. Someone must have painted over that at some point. Yeah, right. Someone was like, F that. I'm straight piping this bitch. I think they make a spray-on aircraft remover and that would definitely be way easier for this, for doing this kind of thing. I'll remember that next time. It's been about an hour and the paint is pretty much bubbled up, but still on the frame. I think the best way to clean this stuff up after it's done getting the paint removed is to honestly just get newspaper, paper towels or anything, just wipe it off and throw it away. One last time, gonna clean it off with the pressure washer. frame is looking pretty dang clean, but there are still some spots with rust and some paint that's left over that I didn't remove with the aircraft remover. So I'm gonna wire wheel everything down, get it cleaned up, and then it's time for paint. Got the frame super cleaned up. This is probably the most clean I've ever got a motorcycle frame prior to painting. I wish I would have thought of this before, but I put some paint thinner in an old Windex bottle and I'm about to spray it on to degrease and clean the uh, frame one last time before painting. I've always just poured it out and wiped it on with a towel, but this is so much easier. Same amount of cleanliness goes for this piece, whatever this is. I know it's kind of weird looking, but clean it up as good as I could get it, and I'm gonna get it nice and painted. And also, the swing arm is nice and brushed and ready for paint. If you spend a lot of time on the prep work, the painting part should be easy, and it should come out super nice. It's time for paint. I'm gonna start out with this Rust-Oleum Clean Metal Primer. coat I'm gonna be using the same stuff I used on the gas tank which is just this custom shop satin chassis black and I've got a little bit of reducer here and a little bit of hardener left so let's mix up some paint the mix ratio is four to one the only measuring device I could find is a tablespoon so I'm gonna do like eight tablespoons of paint to one tablespoon of hardener and then half a little bit just a tiny bit of reducer eight to two a little bit of the reducer
clean already, so it's just one coat. So I'm gonna mix up like twice as much and see where that gets me. starting to set up but overall it looks pretty good and it's just the frame so it's not a huge deal all right guys I got the frame painted paints already pretty much dry and that was like my third time using a spray gun instead of spray paint and I, I think I'm getting a little bit better at it finally I have minimal orange peel, no sags. It's a urethane paint and it's gonna hold up really well. It's great for the frame. The color is actually called chassis black. It came out a little bit more glossy than I remember. Anyway, it's a nice black, nice clean paint job and it's gonna really help with tying the whole bike together. So guys, you know what that means? Every single part for the TS-185 is restored, painted, rebuilt whatever ready to reassemble so hope you guys are getting as excited as i am i can already hear this bike starting up thank you guys for watching if you haven't already please hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on the reassembly of the ts185 like the video if you're as excited as i am if there's anything you want to see me do on the ts185 comment down below check out the patreon if you want to help out with more frequent videos i've only been able to do like one video per week lately. I've just been really busy. If you guys go check out the Patreon, just a dollar a month or five dollars a month, there's some cool benefits on there and it would definitely help to get the videos coming out faster and more frequently and maybe even better quality videos. Yeah, so thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned. Peace out. Watch out, watch out, move back. I'm sorry.